But my question for you is, uh, as a family man, you know, how do you balance, you know, putting in the work and the time? Because someone like yourself, I know you're driven, you're ambitious. You know, how do you find that balance? That's and I bet great, you people would love to know that. Great question. Uh, I have a great spouse. Mm. I know I do. She's more powerful than mm. I am. Smarter, wiser, all that. More self-actualized. Mm. And she, and, and I know, and man, I know all these, I hear what's going on in society, the men and women battle. Mm-hmm. I stay out of relationships and stuff. I'll talk about, there's certain things I'll talk about, relationships, religion, and other people's finances. I don't get involved. <laughs> but between no you and I, me and you can talk because we're cool. We get along very well. Uh, sure. My spouse. Yeah. Is like, that's my chick. Yeah. That's my, when they say that's a rib, yeah. I don't know who gave who the rib. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I might have hers. I don't know. But she helps me uh, yeah. and guides me and and, and, and understands my attack sure. and believes in it. So that helps me. But then calendars, written, yeah. not written, digital, analog. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But my, my kids and family come first. Mm-hmm. I'll drop everything for them. Mm. Uh, mm. No matter what, and it, it, I don't care how much I will lose monetarily or whatever, but that comes first. And I and I saw that you know example. I'm giving entertainment. I love entertainment industry. I love watching it, and it's very it's entertaining to me. But Chappelle walked away from all that money. But look how much money he's making now. Yeah, for sure. But taking care of himself because taking care of himself is taking care of his family. I'm mean, gonna keep saying himself because as men. That's how we protect our family. Oh, yeah. We say, we say, oh, yeah, it's me. I'm doing whatever. That's fine. But hit me with all the rocks. Yeah. Don't touch them. Don't, don't touch them. them. Exactly. Don't touch them at all. You don't, don't want to. You don't know what the wrath I'm going to pull out. Yeah. Uh, so that is how I stay grounded and I stay balanced. And now I have, I have three boys, man. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I'm having the ride of my life. Yeah. So I do that by the calendar, the organization. I write my goals down on paper and I sign them and hey. I put dates on when I want to achieve them. And I tell this to my young nephews and cousins and all that, that stuff works. It's a signature. I don't know why that signature writing your name. And then I write underneath it and print my name, like a contract and the, contract. And the date. Yourself. I've achieved all of those things. Uh, one mm-hmm. time I wrote down what vehicles I wanted at three of them. Hey. Mm. I only wanted one at three of them. Each, every year I got a new mm. one until I didn't want them no more. Mm. Now I drive an old four vehicle because I now I'm into old school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So the job I wanted, they told me no, uh, like let's say four years before, got the job. Mm. But now I don't want it. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, that's how I, I stay balanced and grounded. And I have a book, I have multiple books. And I write notes. Oh, yeah. And if I study something, I write notes about everything. <laughs> you got a book? You, listen, you know about the book. It's always next to me. It's, it's always next to me. It's, it's, it's always, it got, you have to have a book, man. It, it, it can't book. just be in your head, right? Yeah. See, that's why we connect, bro. That's why we didn't have to say much. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? And, and, and the way, and another thing I do when I write the book, I write it as if I'm going to hand it to my kids before my kids even came. Because mm-hmm. I want them to be able to open it. And they may not get everything, but they understand the gist of it. Mm. I'm going to give them the blueprint. Like, yeah, I, I can leave you this, leave you all that. But these are way more valuable because this is my life written down. Yeah. Yeah, that's special, man. That's special. And, and I can imagine that that has uh, been a very fulfilling. Uh, every time you hit that checkpoint, it's fulfilling because they're there mm. to experience it with you. Right? Well, that, yeah. My old is only three. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, listen, you know, <coughs> hey, listen, I remember that that new baby energy in, in the house is different. Oh. It makes you, you feel like Superman. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I, yeah, man, it's, oh, man, what a world, man. How does it feel being a dad and doing all of this? And then you you have an older son and, a, you, you know, you got older kids. How does it feel when they look at you and you're doing what you're doing? What do you, what does that make you feel like? Yeah, man. And it's it's interesting because you're battling the messaging that's out there for for them, right? The messaging out there is easy life, right? The messaging is um, not to um, be direct. The messaging mm-hmm. is um, don't hold yourself accountable. So there is a there's a unique 
aspect of that where it's like I can't be uh I might seem like I'm too much. Mm. Right? I might seem mm. like I'm too much to my kids because I know what it me I know what it feels like to not have it at all. Mm-hmm. To not have it at all. So when you have an opportunity to go get it, like I see a lot of my sons. I see a lot in both of them, both of them. But at the end of the day, they have to be held accountable for their own decision making. And I'm learning that as a father right now. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. once you know what I mean? Like once they're they're of you know, their mind, they're able to make a decision and articulate in a way of why they made that decision. Now I have to play kind of like, I got to be like Obi-Wan, you know what I mean? I got to like guide them, but I can't give them all the answers. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm learning that. I'm learning as a father that, that you have to be invited sometimes. Mm -hmm. Is that hard? It's the hardest, it's the hardest thing in the world, man. Because it it, it pisses me off. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Because I didn't have my dad. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't have yeah. my dad in my life, right? Yeah, so. and especially when you didn't have a dad, you yeah. know, like it's even my kids are only three, and there's sometimes I'm like, help them up. No, 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 <laughs> no. I told you not to do that. I, t- I told you. I told you not to do it, right? I told you what was going to happen, right? <laughs> but you had to test it. Yeah. Another thing, my wife and I also say, you know, because we, ha- well, she had both her parents at times. Uh, however, we're like these kids have them together right now and it's a pretty cool household because nothing's perfect, but we don't understand that. We don't, we're not, we've never been those kids. Yeah, so we yeah. gotta, okay, you figure it out, bro. I'm learning from you, right? I didn't even know this. Oh, this how it is. This is how it is, right? <laughs> That's a, it, it, isn't that what <clears throat> business is all about too? Yeah. You got these new um, young forward thinkers that's, they just do things there. And now I'll tell you a funny quick story, right? Like I, was, I went into an, uh, an interview one time in, in, in New York City. And what, what, you know, back in the day, you're going to like New York City, you're going to wear your best suit. You're going to make yeah. sure you look good, right? You're fresh, yeah. Right, yeah. I thought I was I was looking fresh that day, bro. Like, you I, know what I mean? I had, I I had thought, that blue thought, suit, you know? I, I walk thought. in, I walk in there, not one person with a suit on. <laughs> they don't wear Suits no more, bro. They don't wear suits. They don't wear any of those things. So I'm thinking, I'm like, damn. I'm like, am I, am I old? Like, I looked at that like, <laughs> you know what I'm mean? saying? that, right? Like, what the hell is going on here, right? But here's the cool part, man. When I got in there, <laughs> some of these people were very sharp. Man. They were very, very connected, very deep, deep thinkers, right? And I really vibe with them. And I'm like, okay. So we're in a new era where it's not just, I mean, the clothes matter in different places. Mm-hmm. Well, if you can get the work done, that's what it, that's what it comes down to. And so that that experience is what I brought to my coaching. So when people will come to me and they're like, I've been in corporate all my life. How do I shift out of corporate and kind of show people who I really am? And then and then we talk, talk about their clothes. Mm. What, what would you wear outside of the corporate environment? What makes you you outside of that corporate you know, attire. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that sh- shift, like whenever I got on, we getting on this podcast right now, I'll put the hat on because mm-hmm. I know what that does. It's a, it's a, it's a trigger, right? It triggers, yo, it's time to it, let's go to work. And then when we get off this, I take the hat off the trigger. I'm, I'm home. I'm good. I'm rested. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that, that right there is uh what I'm learning about balance. It's like, Hey, if somebody invites you into their space, be willing to absorb and observe and, um, and connect. And once you connect, then bring it here, put your thoughts on it, and then let it go. Let it do what it do. Mm-hmm. Let it do what it do. Let it do what it do. I had a, I had a, I had a good friend of mine who said, let it do it. Do what it do. I like that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good, you know, I, I love our culture, man. I love our culture. I never, I'll never step away from it. Ever. Uh, I, have a, I have a question that I, that I looked up and I was like, this is a great question to ask you. What are some misconceptions okay. or myths, motivational speaking, about motivational speaking that you like to debunk? Oh, man. No, I want to know your answer to this first. Before I even get into this, what's your answer so, to so, this? So let me, let me ask you like this, man. I have many peers who I look up okay. to. Okay. I got a friend of mine. I mean, a peer. He's a friend. I'm always at his crib who is a YouTube influencer Mm -hmm. with millions of followers. Mm. He's a superstar to me. Mm. He doesn't think he's a superstar Mm. while he's he's in his mansion, right? His mini mansion. (laughs) 
And I'm like, I'm playing basketball in this backyard. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and he always tells me to speak. And I have not, I'm not a motivational speaker. I spoke when I was younger. <laughs> and I, I, I believe now, he keeps telling me, Santi, you got to do it. So I'm not speaking. I use my podcast to do it. So I don't feel like I'm standing at a stage giving a TED Talk. I'm not showing other people how to do it. I'm not saying I don't want mm-hmm. to, but I feel like it's pulling me there. So mm. I don't have an answer for that. Mm. Right now, mm. That I feel that I have. Someone may say I may have it, but I don't feel like, like I have that answer yet. Okay. Okay. So that, make, that makes sense. So you want to know, again, uh, the question is misconceptions about motivational speaking. Um, I feel like people who go into motivational speaking with the intention to motivate people, I don't think they do too well. Mm. Um, at least for the long term, because you can kind of feel it when somebody's trying to motivate you. And if they don't get the response they're looking for, it feels forced. Mm. When I walk, walk into a place, I'm never trying to motivate anyone because I believe in self-efficacy. I believe in self-motivation. And I believe in that if you know what your anchor is, which is what we talked about earlier, you'll be driven. You'll be, you'll take action because it's emotionally invested to your purpose. And so, but I do work, I have worked with uh, motivational speakers. And the one thing we work on is the story is not about you. You're just, just a narrator. Mm. You are not the hero of this story. Trust me. The audience is. You have to allow them to partake in this story. And I, and I always say, well, think about it. Who are some of your, what are some some of your favorite books, favorite TV shows, favorite movies, right? I was just watching uh, the Jamie Foxx show, Mm -hmm. right? It's on Netflix right now. Right? Jamie Foxx show. That is probably one of the most talented men who has ever graced, walked this earth, right? He can do it. He can do everything. He can do everything. However, do you ever notice that he gives everybody their shine on his show? Yes, he does. And he will put himself at a lower like he'll put himself in bad situations to highlight how funny someone is yeah. or to highlight how talented someone is. Yeah. That is somebody that, that will make you, will inspire you. And then you will feel motivated to take action. Mm-hmm. So our goal, goal as speakers essentially is, is my story. What do I want my story to do once the story is over? Mm. What mm. do I want my audience to do? Once the story is over. So, and this is what this means. What do I want my story to do once the story is over? Do I want my story to continue to resonate for the next two, three weeks? Or do I want it to just resonate for five minutes? Okay. Do I want my audience to take action? Or do I want my audience to just follow me on Instagram? Whenever I walk in a place, I always ask myself, what do I want the audience to do once they stop listening to me? And... Nine times out of 10, my answer to that is, is I want them to continue the story using their own story. Mm-hmm. Because guess what? Every time they think of that story, who are they going to think of? For you. And that's the game. That's the game. I, I'm, I don't want to be front stage. If you call mm-hmm. me your cheerleader, I am doing, I am successful. If mm-hmm. you say I'm the person in the background, if I'm your... If I'm your, uh, uh, what, what's my man name? If I'm your Alfred, mm-hmm. and you, you, you got man in there, yeah. that's okay. Hey, they yo, Alfred, so, Alfred lived in the mansion, didn't do any of the missions. <laughs> he knew he was safe. <laughs> and if he needed to get down? He could get down. And yeah. that's, that's the goal. I want anybody who listens to these stories and listens and has my coaching, when they walk in the room, they are Superman. They are Batman. They are they are the hero of their story, and I'm the one that's in the background, just excited, smiling because they have because I know the audience has no idea the force that they're about to meet mm. because of all the work we've done together. And so that's what I would say about misconception of, uh, of motivational speakers. It is not people think motivating people is the best way to take to get people to take action, and I don't think it's that. I, I think when you teach people how to uh, resonate with a relatable story that's grounded in human experiences. That will be any motivational speaker any day. Mm. Mm. That's dope. Oh, pre- appreciate like you, comment. Danielle. Appreciate you, Danielle. There's a lot of love in, it in the comments. I love y'all, man. Appreciate y'all. Yeah, much love. Thank everybody for watching, man, and tuning in. And tuning in to All Gas, No Break podcast. 
Uh, we're everywhere. This uh, will be placed on that uh, everywhere. Apple, YouTube, Podbean, <laughs> iHeart. You'll follow us. Chris, I, I will let you know this, though. I have I try to drop uh, at least two podcasts a week. Okay. A minimum one. And I have, I don't know how many I have in the bag. So if you see this takes the time to come out, I will leave this Instagram live up at all times. Mm. However, the clean, edited audio version with music and everything, that'll come out in a few weeks, sometimes maybe a few months. But uh, this will always be here, just in case you need to know. Now, are you doing all this by yourself? Because I know there's a lot of people out there that are, are solopreneurs, they're one business people, one business creators. Like, are you doing this all by yourself? Do you have a team? You know, give some light to so some. I have a team. Uh, I have my partner. He's a tech guy. Okay. So we're getting to the point where we've gotten to the point now. We're almost there. We're like one more step away from it. Where our lives, everything is done. Everything is edited live, done and can be wow. released. Wow. So that's, I'm like a few weeks away from that finally being there. These I do myself, mm. myself. I'm, I, I, I think of myself as, and when I'm hearing you talk about how you're controlling the room, I'm a DJ, I'm an audio engineer. Mm. So I talk, these are my mixtapes. Hey. Hey. And I treat them as such. These are my mixtapes and I put my heart and soul into them and I just can't, Give them to no one just yet. <laughs> However, the newer shows that I'm going to be producing, mm. I'm going to have an editor and all that good stuff. Mm. But this All Gas No Break podcast, this is, I'm eventually let it go because it's coming to that point because of the businesses that are coming to me. I can't do it all no more. Sure. I can't be in the business and edit. The creator, yeah. edit. Mm -hmm. Video, audio, all that. I can't do it all. Uh, that That day is coming Coming to a close soon, but I'm gonna try my best to hold on as much as possible. But I still do two a week. Uh, I still do two a week, one to two a week, and uh, great some guess, guess, I get some great numbers. I get some great numbers. Uh, finally, <laughs> it's some work. I love it. I love it. Danielle said, "Look, Danielle says uh, I love that you put your soul into it, but don't hold out on us. People want it. See, oh, they they okay. they hey, calling thank you, you, Danielle. Thank you, Danielle. Well, hey, check out the others. Man, I got a lot of." I have over 150 episodes easily yeah. <laughs> that I've done so far. We've been doing this for seven years, man. Uh, seven years. Dedication. Over 150 episodes, maybe more than that, because some of them, you know, you take them away, you delete them, things happen. Uh, Chris, let me ask you this question. What's up, man? What do you do? What's going on? What do you do for fun? Oh, what do we do for fun? Well, just recently, you know, I am a huge, and I mean a huge Knicks fan, right? I'm a New York Knicks fan. I love right that. now, that's okay. Because <laughs> I, I, you know, I was, I was a Knicks yeah. fan. I let them go. <laughs> After Ewing left, I let them go. I mean, I'm born into this, man. It, 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 it's just, that's just what it is. And so, what do I do for fun? Uh, just recently, I took myself to a Knicks game. And I just was around the people and the energy there, man. It's, it's been phenomenal. Uh, there's another guy uh, who does great work who's built himself up very similar to you and now he's he's on tv now he's on the radio now because of it wow. uh based on uh, 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 C, uh cp uh from nick's fan tv check him out he's really uh, a okay. great great guy um but yeah for fun if i'm not watching my knicks or i'm not um what do you call it uh <laughs> i'm playing video games and i'm watching anime and i'm playing basketball you know just being out around the people i like to do for fun man it's just have a good time, to be honest. Yeah. But what about you? What What do you do for fun now that you have uh, three little ones running in there and uh, you get all this work you got you got to get done? So, man, similar to you, I love basketball. I play a lot of street ball. Yeah. I got to get back into it, and I got a great friend. I got to shout out my man, and he gets me on the court to every like every spring, every spring to summer. He he'll send me a text. You ready to get on the court? <laughs> <laughs> Last year, I hit, I hit the court. Now. I hit the court one time, and I was so down because yeah. I love balling. So street ball, I love hitting the gym. I mean, I look like it now. Yeah, talk, I talk, love talk. getting in the gym and just hitting iron. I love pressing iron. Yeah, and uh, travel. Love my video games. Oh yeah, 
I'm a, I'm a gamer as well. What game? What, what are you playing for video games? Uh, right now, uh, Street Fighter Six, Tekken. Oh, I'm playing Tekken as okay. well. Um, actually, my crew from the DMV. They actually just visited me this uh, last weekend, and uh, that's that's their game. And then a little bit of Apex as well. You know, I'm getting when I have time. Yeah. Right. When I have time. Yeah. 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 I just, uh... <laughs> so yeah, yeah, a little bit of that, and just you know, playing ball, and just being around the people, man. Good that's energy. Yeah, for me, uh, I'm, I'm a Zelda guy. I've been playing Zelda. Hey. I was telling Wall that uh, I played the Breath of the Wild. I mm. like the 100% games. Mm. So I, I, I'll play a game till I, I destroy it. I played 2K. Uh, right now, I, I put my record up. I, I had to set it to Wall. I'm like 180 and 0. All right, All right. Like we, we, got, we got to get a game in. We got to get a game in. <laughs> we got to, man. We got to, man. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a high. <laughs> what made me get like that on 2K was I got a friend that just kept kicking my ass because back in the days NBA Live, oh yeah, no one, like, no one could touch me. Classic. I saw jump on that. Classic. On 2K, some of these kids when I was on the court was destroying me. <laughs> they were destroying me. And then so they danced on you. I had to you. get nice at it. I had to get nice at it. So right now, man, you know, I'm gonna have to play. We gonna play, but you yeah, know, we'll make don't, it happen. don't quit. <laughs> <laughs> I tell people don't quit though. You know what I'm saying? Like play it to the end. If it, if you only got two points, well, they got two points. <laughs> yeah, we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen, man. We'll have some fun. Let's with do it. it. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. That's got to ask that question because we have to unwind. We have to decompress, man. For sure. We have to decompress. It's a lot that we do. It's a lot that we yeah, do, and a lot that a lot. we don't tell people that we do. Because I'm starting to tell. I'm telling people, man, uh, because. The, the goal of All Gas, No Breaks is uh, we're a media firm, you know, and I want the DMV to Baltimore to know where to go to guys and gals to market your product to our local community. For sure. And with doing so, we're in the Netherlands, we're in Finland, shout mm. out Taiwan, shout mm. out uh, UK, shout out the Germany, uh, Canada, Brazil, I'm everywhere. Like from just worrying about focusing about my local community, we've expanded. And yeah. that has been amazing to me. Now the next level is monet not not monetization in the sense of just making dollars. No, uh like global domination, like Fox Five, NBC, yeah. like that media firm becoming a place where we actually host and hold and create for Others for sure, and show them how to do it at, at, at a at a lower scale or at a high scale because we can do it either way. We can do. It. I went to school for this, yeah. so I want to be able to show the youth and the people of uh, the people that don't have voices that you know you can create something. That's true. You can do this, and you will. Oh yeah, man! I know I will. I got speaking to existence. I, I know I will. I just I know it is. I, I know. I know it's when now. Because you put it here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Once it goes but also, here. I, believe, I also have come to the point I believe it. Because there was some sure. times, like, imposter syndrome, you know, we all go through that. But everybody was an imposter at one time. Steve Jobs, Bill right. Gates. Everybody. Yeah. You yeah. know, I, even my man with the Teslas. Uh, come on. he. There, you have to believe you got it. And it takes time to get to that point where you go, man, fuck this. I got this. Yeah. Yeah. And you got and you got to be okay with people misunderstanding you. You know, that's a big part. You know, I, I you know, I just tell people I was the most known unknown person you'll ever meet, mm. right? Because mm. we can have a whole conversation. You will feel so connected and seen, and you still won't know anything about me. <laughs> mm. All right. And I'm learning. You know, as I like you said, we unwind and we we connect and we do things outside of our business. Um, people start to resonate with those aspects of your life, right? Um, you know, I've been, you know, years for years. I was going to anime conventions before it was mainstream. I was just looking. Yeah. At, I was just looking at the pictures the other day. Remember, you we were in, all the con. We were in Baltimore, and I was like, "Yo, we used to be right over here." My man with the waters, the water man used to be out here, ice cold water guy. That was 2007, mm. right? 2007. We in 2024. And I'm telling you, I was part of that community before it was even, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we used to have to yeah. fight people because they thought we was we was we was kind of soft because we <laughs> whatever it was, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, get it. I, I got introduced to that world back in 2012 for myself, to be honest with you. But I was always a Dragon Ball Z fan. Yeah. You know, 
Yeah. Super oh. Saiyan Santi. You know? Yeah, got, come on. Got, it's goaded. <coughs> That's goaded right there. You already know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout out to man. Rest in peace, man. To, yeah. uh, Harry Toriyama, for sure. Completely, yeah. yeah. Rest, rest, in peace, rest in power. Rest, rest, in, power. Power, rest man, in power, yep. Rest in power. Man, 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 man. Yo, Chris, uh, Walt and I were speaking, and we were saying that we have to all, yeah, us three, have one of these conversations. I love that. The three of us. For sure. You know, and sure. uh, I said, yeah, we need to do that. Uh, are you going to tell me more cons this year? Because I met my man at a conference, everybody. Afro's an audio podcast conference. Yeah. Yeah. You got to check it out. Uh, if you're, especially if you're a black content creator in the world of podcasting sure. and you're looking for a community of people to embrace you and to give you education and information, I want to shout out my boy Talib. Talib. Shout Peace. out Corey. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, Chicago, Big Corey. Black, yeah, Big Corey at Black Podcast Association. And everyone is welcome. But, you know, for those that feel like they don't have a voice and they need help, please join those communities. It happens in October. This is where I met Chris. Yeah. Uh, I remember we met at the bar, man. I walked up to the bar. I was like, I was like, that guy got something right there. You know, the vibe. You know, you feel the for vibe. Sure. And, and I love that you brought that up earlier about walking into a room and listening for that. Because, you know, I said that for the wife. But, you know, I'm like, yeah, you did, that does happen with friends, too. For sure. But, for sure. And I never thought, till you said this, I never thought of that. But it's how I make many of my friends. So yeah, I'm going to a podcast conference next week. I'm going to the podcast movement conference in LA. And uh, I was trying to figure out what am I going to do there? Well, how, like, cause I, I, I have what I need now. Yeah. You know, I have what I need. I got the following. I got the listenership. I got, you know, I need to connect. I need to, I need a good connection. Mm. I need like, what kind of connection you think you, you, you are focused on achieving or at least um, putting together? What kind of connection? What I'm looking for is another me. Yeah. I'm going to be candid. I'm going to yeah. be real. I need another me. Yeah. I need to find me in another person. I'm not being exactly like me, but someone that loves podcasting the way I like it, the way I love it, the way I dig it. I'm, just, I'm reading four books on podcasting right now. You know, I, I read every single book that's on podcasting. I read it. I read them. Some are good, some are great, some are bad. But I enjoy even the bad ones, you know, because I know this medium is going to create something outrageous. I, I, I like to compare it to when you watch that movie, uh, Cadillac Records. Yeah, 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 yeah. When they had to record records in the, the sand, like in a desert in the radio station. Mm. But back then, that was what controlled entertainment for, for a city. For, for sure. a town, for a world. We're in that space right now in 2024. Yeah, they got NBC, Netflix, and all that, but those guys are like falling at the, they're dropping because the overhead is so high. Yeah. It's back to those days in a, in, in, in a desert mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. with an antenna. Mm. Mm. I feel that we're there. So I need to find me. I'm looking for me. I'm looking for me and somebody else <laughs> that can take on some responsibilities. <laughs> and I'm behind them. You're trying to trans. I see you, boy. Trying to transition out. You got to. You got to. Yeah, place I'm yourself. behind that person, man, because I need that person. That's huge. That's yeah, big. Man. yeah, man. But I, I don't want to keep you long, uh, man. I appreciate this conversation. Uh, we want to keep doing this. I want to keep doing this with you, but especially when you're down in DC because you get a DMV. You, you got to hit me up. You, you got to come know. to the studio. I'm going to ask you two more questions. But one of my favorite questions to ask is your top three motivators in life that keep you going. It don't have Ooh. to be podcasting. It don't got to be motivational speaking. There's top three motivators and why. Oh, yeah. So, so first is my faith. Because uh, even when my mind was going crazy, things weren't working around physically and the physical. Spiritual, mm-hmm. it, was already, it was already working out for me. You know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and without having faith, uh, I don't think I would be here right now. You know, mm-hmm. I had too much stuff happening. At, at, and I should have. I should have been down, mm. um, but I overcame. And so that's the, the one of the first things. My family, of course, is number two. Um, and shout out to my family. Um, shout them out, man. Yeah, like what, without my family, you know, you know how you you by yourself, you only have access to so much of your potential. Mm. However, when you have your family there they bring out parts of your potential that only they can bring out. And now it's revealed to you and you can use it in an effective way. And Mm -hmm. so, and that usually is to not only 
grow personally, but to show love back to your family. And so I'm thankful for that, right? All my, I mean, I mean, every single one of my family members, from my 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 kids to my wife, um, all the way to my sisters and my cousins. That it's important, right? I I look at my sister right now. I won't say what who she works for, um, because <laughs> I'm a little scared of them. <laughs> but who she works for, um, they're a very powerful company. She inspires me because she made it out of the hood, the yeah. hood of hood. Right. Mm-hmm. And I remember her and her brother in those books while everybody was outside doing whatever. They was hitting those books. Now she has traveled to more countries mm-hmm. than I can think of. You know, that I can't even count how many countries she's yeah. been yeah. to. Right. And yeah. so she, like my family is definitely inspiration. And then the number three, honest, honestly, man, I, I know this may sound a little bit. Uh, people may think it's arrogant or may, I got to thank myself. That's right, man. I'm grateful for me. I- it's not I'm grateful at for all, me. man. I'm grateful for me, man. Because guess what? If I gave up on me, none of this would even be possible, man. I didn't give up on myself. I didn't give man. up on myself. I, I, I love myself. That's the, I want people to know that. I love myself. Right. I care for myself. I build rapport with myself. Mm. And the reason that, and guess what? The more rapport I build with myself and the more I take care of myself, I don't have to bring that to the table when I want to help somebody else. Mm. Mm. My ego is I speak away. That truth, man. I speak. Ego you know, is Dame, da- I love how Dame Dash does. He says, he says, like, yo, why would I doubt you? Like, you know, <laughs> Dame Dash is he, he's the epitome of what I, I I always aim to be in regards to myself. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm, now I'm, I've been here for like six years now. I'm here now. You know, many people may not think they don't mean I know it or not, but I'm here. I'm, I'm there with it as well. So I understand what you're saying. You have to love yourself. For sure. And and I love how you bring up family. I had spoken to one of my young men and he was like, man, not everybody's family the same. I'm like, you know, I used to be the same way. Mm. And then one day I said, then why don't you make the family type? Make the family. Why don't you why don't you pull in cousins? Why don't you pull in aunts and uncles? Why don't you stop the traumas? Why don't you confront them and fix them and tell them, yo, even though all that's going on. We blood, and the ones that want to still disappear and they're bad for you, they will, t- they will find a way to remove themselves. Remove but themselves. the ones that you're going to find people in there, especially the youth that are looking for some grounding. Somebody got to be the root to the tree, and that's what families are. They're that's what I say, family tree. Somebody got to start the root. If you keep chopping it off, <laughs> you're never going to grow, and that's why you don't see. The sun, you don't see the light of day. That's huge. So huge. it's all about being family. I one day I turned around, and I said, and for me it was around Wakanda when Wakanda happened. So I lost my mom and things were going bad. Mm. And I was like, what am I gonna do? You know, you know, I need to dive deep into family. Mm. And I just started calling family members I didn't even know. Mm. Family members that were family, I just heard of their name. Next thing you know, I'm being invited to parties. Mm. I'm traveling to the United States of America, hanging out with family. Then it started trickling over to my wife and her, her mm-hmm. family started mm-hmm. building tighter bonds with people she didn't even know. Mm. You know, so it starts with one root, one root to the, and then that grows it. Sure. And they watch the the blood come together. You know, for so sure. I'm all about family, 100 percent involved in that. I believe that I'm all for that. Uh let me ask these questions for you. These two questions. What do you What do you want people to know? What do you want to? But you're leaving my podcast tonight. We're gonna to do this again. But what do you want them to know from this episode about what you're doing, about who you are, anything you mm. want them to know? Mm. Well, I don't go anywhere. I'm not invited. Mm. So if you're not hearing from me or I'm not in your space, it's because I probably haven't been invited. But if you would like to invite me, let's let's have a conversation. Uh, number two. You have everything you need, but sometimes you just need somebody to look at, look through your blind spots mm. to pull out some of those obstacles that's in your way. That might be me. It might be AG, you know, that might be AG and uh, B marketing, right? That's right. Let them know. Right. It, it might be that you just have to make sure that when you decide on your vision and what it's going to look like, that you go full force and you, you focus on those 10,000 iterations. And this year, which is, um, I got to give it up to Walt. Walt has really helped me with this. Um, making myself a little bit more accessible for mm-hmm. people to connect with, right? Um, he wants me to be on more stages and talking at more uh, conferences. He wants me to be connect with people like you more. 
And so I'm opening my doors more to show up um, and be more accessible and uh, not be Batman and uh, Alfred too much, right? Uh, yeah. hey, but uh, actually show up and show people that there are people who are out there, especially for the women out there to, to support them, um, to be seen, heard, and acknowledged. And I guess the last thing, the last thing is, listen, you got to have fun with this. Like, mm. you, like, I'm having fun. I'm having fun. Every day I show up and I'm working with clients and I see their transformation. It could be a transformation after 10 minutes of working with me or it can be a transformation after a year. I'm going to be just ex- as excited as the 10 minute in the year together. It doesn't matter. I just want you to go where you need to go. And so I'm always going to show up for the people who need my help. Um, I'm always going to show up for people who invite me um, if, the, if, if it's aligned, right, if it's aligned. And um, yeah, just support. I want to support you. And, and I would ask for the first time ever, if you see something that you think would be helpful for me, let me know. That's right, man. Let me know. Man, I recently had to let go of a, uh, of a pair mm. because I said something one day. He was like, yo, you're so late to the game. Yo, we're so late to stuff. You, and you, I said, dude, if you knew that, why didn't you tell me? I was like, you know what? You're bad for me. Mm. It's like that. I told him that because he was. I was like, if you knew something I didn't know and you didn't, and, and you you instead you're laughing at me. You just been like, "Oh, you ain't know that before." You could, you, that means you should have gained me when you knew I was asking those questions. Sure. If you didn't gain me, that means you're you're not trying to help me win at this game, bro. And if I'm not on your team, it's cool, man. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I have no 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 hard feelings, man. Hey, it's Sorry. okay, man. man. Hey, look, I, I, I can be traded. You can be traded. <laughs> hey, what did they I watch in the NBA? Game. It's all about it's all about systems, right? If you're on the right team with the right coach, with the right teammate. So I may not be on your team, and that's okay. And that's okay. My next question, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, roll out and let you do your thing. Enjoy the family and the night. I appreciate everything, man. I needed this tonight because, like, you know, you're always up. Everybody's always positive. And people think you're positive, but some days, like today, was a oof, it was a mm. long day. I got a lot going on. I've been attacked. Like this week, I've been attacked. Mm. But mm. off camera, when we talk again, I'm doing some outrageous stuff in my local community that I didn't think was going to, I never think was going to be possible where this mm. podcasting thing is taking us. But uh, what advice do you have for someone that wants to do what you've been doing? You have been doing motivational speaking, podcasting, traveling the world. Mm. And, you know, all that you do, helping others. Mm. What advice would you have for a young person coming up today that wants to uh, follow in your footsteps? Well, first thing I would say is learn the most valuable skill I believe that's on the planet, and that's how to communicate, how to articulate who you are and what you do, because the skills will come. Every door that opens for you, you're going to learn a new skill. You'll be able to refine it. But the one, uh, valuable skill I see I see most people struggle with still and some of the smartest people that I've worked with they work for some of the smartest tech companies in the world they can articulate themselves uh, you need to learn communication you need to learn how to tell stories first to yourself mm-hmm. learn how to t- tell the story to yourself because that's where your inner motivation and your self-efficacy will come from that's how you're going to motivate yourself to move forward even when it feels like you shouldn't mm-hmm. right so how to tell stories to yourself And number two, how to tell stories to others, because you like a comedian, if you can get in, if you can get in front of someone and you can give stories and then visually they start to feel like they're there with you, you have learned a very, very valuable skill that people will pay for. Mm -hmm. And clearly communicate. Clearly clearly communicate. That is is it. Like you said, communication, that's a skill, man. And to, uh, to achieve that, you have to uh, deal with the bumps and bruises. You got it. And and that's what I'm I've been I've gotten past and I'm trying to get a lot of my teammates and friends by away from is like, dude, you're gonna fall. You're gonna fall. And fall hard. Fall hard, dude. Love it. Yeah. Fall you flat on your face and get up. But get up. Yeah. And go again. Yeah. Get up and go again. Even if, if communication like I say, go to the lowest tier. There was a guy Yeah. I don't know I don't know who it was, he said he placed marbles in his mouth just so he can uh better uh he could speak more eloquently because mm. he, he didn't come from wealth and prestige and he was you know he had an accent or maybe he spoke with certain jargon that wasn't what everyone wanted to hear i know not jargon but it would be like uh i guess uh what would you call it? like i know what you call that uh these uh news anchors mm. 
the way they speak, they can be uh, understood by many. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think they, the story was he placed marbles in his mouth or whatever, and he eventually figured it out. So I get that. And at one point in my life, I also felt that because being from New York, you know, we have these accents. Mm -hmm. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know where I'm from. Yeah. You know what borrow everything from. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. So what? You know, if that helps, it helps. If not, you know, but still figure out, go down to that bare bone and uh, come up from it. Man, Chris, I need it today from you, man. I needed to oh, talk man. to you. And I'm happy you were available to me. My bad. <laughs> oh, no, you're kids, good, brother. Kids, family. No, Boy, never, you, never, this. never, met. yeah, never apologize when it comes to family. You good, bro. You good. Amen. Amen. I appreciate that, man. Yo, if you could let the people know who you are, yeah. what it is you do, yeah. and how to connect yeah. with you, we're going to start rolling down. All right, man. My name is Chris Ford Jr. I'm on the All Gas, No Breaks podcast uh, with my guy, Super, Super Saiyan, Santi, you already know. All right. Um, I'm excited to be here. Um, I will say this, that what do I do? People hire me when they don't want to know how to clearly communicate, connect with their audience in the most authentic way possible by using their story. Uh, it's been a pleasure being on this podcast. Thank you to the audience, uh, to all the comments. It's been love. I mean, y'all been in here strong. Yeah. Um, Connect. Shout out Danielle. Yeah, Thank Danielle. You, Danielle. You're welcome. And, Thank hey. you. And Danielle, uh, listen, and Danielle right there, that's a woman that is uh, all gas, no breaks for sure. She oh, she goes 100 okay. percent in um, and you got good things coming your way. But I just want to say um, to follow me where if you felt like there was value here, you felt like you were seen and you were heard and you acknowledged and, we, and you resonated with our conversation. You can follow me at Chris Ford Jr. If there's work that you need to get done, um, especially with your story, ChrisFordJr.com. I'm happy. Uh, to connect. And then anyone that is a dedicated listener and you are following this podcast on Instagram or wherever uh, platform they might be on, if you reach out to me, I will give you a 15 minute Q&A. All right. 15 minute Q&A on your business on how you want to articulate it and clearly communicate it. Uh, we'll have that, that time frame, but you have to be following this podcast, of course, and be following me. Um, and then we'll, we'll just send me a DM. Yeah, well, and it's the first three people, first three people. You know, I got kids and all, so I can't be doing. Hey. I can't be. I can't be helping all y'all right now. I got hey, kids, especially so. when you got kids. <laughs> so three people, all right, three people. Oh, appreciate you, Danielle. Thank you so much. So, um, yeah, that, that's me. Nice man, I appreciate you, man. And everybody, man, you know me, Super Saiyan Santi, All Gas No Break Podcast. We're at at AGMB DMV on Instagram. We're also at at AGMB Marketing. Website coming soon, but if you just look up All Gas No Break Podcast, yo, Chris, I'm I have not done the website thing. Every <laughs> I have it because you can just email me, hit me on any of these platforms. I'm here. I'm mm -hmm. available to them. Uh, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to do it. I have a website. I already have it. I just have it going live. With it. I own all the earls. <laughs> I gotta go live with it. Uh, I'm just I'm rocking with this podcast thing so heavy, uh, and I'm just digging the downloads and the interactions through social media. But eventually, it will come because uh, they control you when you stay on their social mm. platforms for too long. Mm. So, mm. but uh, mm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna direct them my way real soon. But yo, shout out to my girl at Quanta Violin. Shout out to at Rex Corolla's engineer extraordinaire OG Frank and my new. Our uh, host, Red Croc, the super comedian, man. We're kicking ass, having a good time. Yo, everybody, thank you so much. Peace. Well, all right. Say sweet talk. What do you know about that all gas, no break? Man, I heard about that all gas, no break. I don't think they gonna let me on. I ain't got a damn thing to talk about. Boo, they talk about everything. This is all gas, no break. Man, I told you to be going after me, man. It goes after me, man. Yo, that was crazy. It it literally just logged me out. It just logged, it just logged, logged me. you out. Oh, it's all good. Yeah, we see we we see what they're working with. It's all good. Uh, it's all good.
<laughs> we gotta, we gotta. I told my wife today. I said, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take it. And she, you know, this is a, I'm like, I'm about to just take whatever it is coming for whatever we need. We are gonna just take it. Let's make it. So happen. It's all good.